you may have already noticed that we live in the era of fluidity, the era of the things that are fluid, that they are formless. They take their shape according to the will, the need, the desire of each one. Fluidity is what is trending now. You are what you want, who you want to be. Nothing is strictly the way it is presented. Everything is relative. Good is relative, evil is relative. Nothing is defined in such a way that people are taught through culture, ideologies, that they can do whatever they want. Is the first commandment of Satan's Bible. Do whatever you want. Is the first commandment of Satan's Bible. So this fluidity causes people to move, to transport themselves, to gravitate to the opposite extreme of everything from God, because fluidity is the opposite of being defined, which has everything to do with God. When you look at the Word of God, the sacred teachings, you see that everything about God is well defined. You can see in the Bible, heaven and hell. There's no third option, third place. There's no neutral place. After death, the soul goes either to heaven or to hell. There's no purgatory. The Bible gives no indication that there is a purgatory, but only heaven and hell. There's no third term. Those who say, I'm on the fence. I'm neither in one side nor the other. The fence, the doubt, is of the devil. So the Bible shows heaven and hell. The Bible speaks about light and darkness. Light and darkness. Jesus said, those who come after me will not walk in darkness. The world, the Bible speaks about the world as enmity of God. Those who want to be a friend of the world will be an enemy of God. You see that there's no middle ground. There's no such a thing as you can be a friend of the world and also of God. There's no such a thing. Those who are a friend of the world, they are an enemy of God and vice versa. You see that the Word of God presents us the absolute. Things are absolute. The Lord Jesus said in His words, you can read on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, on his first sermon, the Mount Sermon, that says, But let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than this is from the evil one. It's obvious, isn't it? Do you need some interpretation? It's obvious that even in our speech, what is this speech? Is the expression of our thinking, is the expression of our being, our will. This is our speech. Then he said, but let your yes be yes. In other words, when you say yes, it has to be yes. You cannot say yes now and later on say, I didn't mean it like that. No, you must be defined in what you say, in what you believe. I know even Jesus teaching us that we are flawed. The human being can change their mind. At times you think something, you are certain that that is right, but with a new information and maturity, you say, in reality, it's not like that. Humans have this limitation, but that's not what Jesus is talking about. What he's saying is, if at that moment you know that is a no, but you say yes, you are lying. You know 
That is not true, but you speak as if it was. Then you are doing something from the evil one who works with lies. Evil works with lies, because a lie can be anything. The truth, it's only one. You see in this trend of fluidity, another trend is my truth. Am I right? You might have heard people saying that. My truth, what matters is my truth. Yes, but that doesn't exist. There is only one truth, the truth. But the era of fluidity wants people to create their own truths. There are many truths. Even in science, we no longer hear universe. They talk about multiverse. Why? Because the more options, the more fluidity in the beliefs and thoughts from people, more distant they will be from God. More distant. Back in the days, either the person believed in God or they didn't. And then they created a third category, the agnostic, who say, I don't know. I'm sorry, you, agnostic. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at the idea. I know that there are many agnostics and atheists who are more sincere than many Christians. I'm not laughing at the person. I'm laughing at the way of thinking. How the devil creates ideas and spread them so easily. People embrace them. People accept these ideas without questioning. Am I right? So many today, neither to be inclined to one side or to the other, the person says, I don't know. I don't know if God exists. I'm agnostic. So they created a third category. I don't know, maybe the category of the doubt. And people walk in doubt. When you have to do everything in life by faith, not only in regards to God, because if I was an agnostic person in regards to medication, I would not take medication. If I was agnostic in regards to medicine, I wouldn't go to the doctors. I know that medicine can get it wrong. It's not every medication that works. Some, they have side effects. You just need to read the medication box or the prescription. But sometimes you need to work with what you have. I don't have a perfect medication that will heal all diseases and bring no side effects. I have a medication that says it's good for this. It can help with that, but it has these side effects. See if it works for you. Even the doctor says that. And you have to take the medication by faith. Am I right? By faith. You need to go to the doctors by faith. In the faith. You are certain of nothing in this world. You are not certain that you will reach the end of the day alive, or the car that you will drive will not break along the way. You are certain of nothing, that your money will be in your bank account. Your money is on your mobile app. You know you have money based on a number. A number you see on the bank app that says your balance is this. Is what it says. But you know where your money is? No, you don't. But you believe in the word of the bank. You know in the word. The bank may be going bankrupt. Something may happen to the economic system of the country. Those who went through that economic scheme in the early 90s in Brazil, color plan, you can do your research. It hasn't been that long. It hasn't been that long. The people slept with one amount in their bank account and woke up with another. So those who trusted in the money, some even killed themselves. So nothing in this world is absolute. People don't live life with a certainty about everything they do. But when it comes to God, people say, I may believe in the doctor, in the reporter from the news, that means of communication, I believe in it. 
a celebrity. They believe in everything. They believe in Santa Claus, Father Christmas. But when we talk about the Bible, the Word of God, they say, no, this I don't. If I don't see, just like Thomas, or as the Jews, show me the signs. Send a sign that you are the Son of God. The person wants signs. They are blind to the signs that God sent to them, so many, through creation, through nature, down to personal things in their lives. God has given them so many signs, but they want more signs. I want to see, I want to touch, I want to smell it, I want to know it before believing in it. But Jesus said, more blessed are those who didn't see but believed. Am I right? If we have to see to believe, this is not faith. Don't forget this. Salvation is through faith. If you have to see, touch or feel, for you to believe is no longer faith. Then God works with what is absolute. Yes, yes, no, no. Whatever goes beyond that comes from the evil one. If you have accepted the doubts, if you have accepted the fluidity of this world, if you're finding it hard to define who you are, in whom you believe, and most importantly, in regards to your soul, learn that you are on the path of the extreme opposite of everything that has to do with God. Because with God is either yes, yes, or no, no. God is well defined in his word and in his truth. The devil is whatever you want him to be. The devil, Satan, is everything you want and imagine and feel him to be. No matter if it is true or a lie, decide which side you are. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.